Speaking of uh, must be the money, and uh, I loved your column about this inflection point that the NBA is at, at a whole, as a whole, but it seemed like it was inspired by the Jonte Porter um, gambling scandal. Uh, and I almost hesitate to use the word scandal because if he were if it were Michael Porter Jr., maybe it would be a bigger deal. I don't know how many people are up in arms about it. We, Michael and I were just talking about Shohei Otani the other day and just how pervasive I assume gambling is, whether it's, you know, within, and we just don't know it yet, uh, within locker rooms, within leagues, within organizations, within families, friend circles. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, the, the, the media has fully embraced gambling. But this John T. Porter situation, I mean, it's like it's new school point shaving. Like, it's fascinating because it, like, it, it, it's, it's walking, talking, and quacking, and, and looking like a duck where my man was manipulating. First of all, the fact that there are prop bets on John T. Porter. Let's start with that. That there are prop bets on a John T. Porter. Thank is, you. That, we're Thank all you. degenerates. Yes. We're all degenerates, okay? But like, manipulating the prop bets, it seems, you know, it, uh, through his own performance or lack thereof, this is like, this is a new low. I, I guess, what, what are they saying, not just on NBA Twitter, Vinny, but in, in, in NBA circles, uh, you know, on your text threads with NBA executives and officials about how deep this rabbit hole may go specifically for the NBA, this gambling rabbit hole. I mean, I think it's one of those, you know, lack of a better phrase, unintended consequences, right? Like, I feel like we're all, we all walk around with a sign that says, Vincent Goodwill presented by DraftKings. You know what I mean? Like, that might be on, that might be on our IDs at this point, and our driver's yeah. licenses and passports, you know, at, at this point. It's, because look, it, it's just one of those things, y'all, that before when it was taboo, you could kind of hear no evil, see no evil. You know what I mean? Richard Pryor, Gene mm-hmm. Wilder, you can kind of keep your eyes closed kind of pretend that it only happens in places that you don't like to talk about, you know, like that sort of thing. Now, because everybody is so embedded with it, it's not just the NBA, the NFL. Embedded it's college, and in It's college bed. sports. Embedded in bed. and in bed, both of them, yes. In bed. Yeah. And look, look, not just, not just in bed, but when they try to get out of bed, Jacqueline come scrolling again, having a meeting with you, and then love didn't bring your ass home last night. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's where we are with this gambling stuff. And I think... If, you, if you're so in love with, with, with her, why are you here with me? So in love with Angela, why are you here with me? <laughs> hey, I'll say this as an aside. Please, by all means. You... <laughs> I don't even answer that question in that moment, right? I just get one more in and then leave. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh you just get one more in, then you leave. Right. And then right. you kind the of let people matter read at that the point. Teams. Right. You know what? You know what, Jacqueline? Yeah. You right. You right, Jacqueline. Just say whatever you gotta say. Okay. Uh, what were you saying about? Where were Jacqueline we? wasn't oh, in, yeah. Jacqueline wasn't in love with me. So why I gotta be in love with you? <laughs> what are we doing here? Now she just loves the yeah, new Michael, Holl- yeah. Michael Holly's over there. Back to the next right here. I see how the logic. I see the logic. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Back to the and lecture. And once again, right y'all, 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 y'all talking to a single man who who has been bad decisions and made bad decisions. So I totally get yeah. it, right? But yeah. but as 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 a general thing, the NBA didn't catch this. They just caught this, and I think that's what the NBA may be banking on is that we can only know so much about this. It's Vegas's job to make sure that all these things are on the up and up, not for Vegas to protect itself, but for Vegas to protect the gamblers from taking advantage of them. And this was a spot where if John Tate Porter unders are the biggest money maker for a given night, I'll tell you what happened. <clears throat> Whatever happened, this is just my amateur crackpot theory. The first incident happened in January. Oh man, we cashed out. We gonna stay quiet for a minute. We gonna make sure nobody catches us. We gonna make, we not gonna do it again. We not gonna do it again for another two months. And then they're like, hey y'all, let's go rob Terry Benedict's uh, casino one more time, <laughs> right? That's what, and they like, we go, and they didn't think that Vegas was watching. I bet you if the second thing didn't happen, 
we wouldn't know about it. You, If you go in for your quick big score the first time and you go home, you leave the casino and go home. These fools, whoever these fools are, decided that they Dante were going to try it twice. Dante no, Porter, I don't know wait if it's, a minute. Well, hold on. Uh, oh, I don't oh, think it's Jonte oh, Porter. You, I, no, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not saying it isn't Jonte Porter. I'm saying people acting with with insider knowledge. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's from a, John yeah, T. Porter that's, that's, and his participation. Right, that's like, right. Yeah, yeah Jonte right. Porter. Jonte Porter is just one person here. I, I'm I'm wondering. He's gonna uh, smoke Michael it. Vinny, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, oh, it is. No, he's no. Look, it, it's clear that he he doesn't really have a case. But that's Jonte Porter. So it's easy for us to look at a guy who averages what four or five points a game and be like, okay, whatever. What's this dude thinking? But is this a case where the NBA and the NBA Players Association have to get together and be the prevengers, not the Avengers, <laughs> but prevengers? I mean, think about it. Look, um, if you're Jonte Porter, you've got inside information. You know what's going to happen. So what's to stop somebody else? You can go on and on. It could be whether it's Raptors, Oklahoma City, whether somebody is crazy enough wants to bet on Ohio State, Michigan football, whatever it is, if you have some inside information, Vinny, there are a lot of guys who can just say, all right, I'll do it, but I'll be smarter. I'll be smarter than Jonte was, and I can make my money. This is something that the NBA has to address, isn't it? Well, you, since you brought up Ohio State, Michigan, I will once again remind you of the score the last three, I just did that 17 you. to 74. I see that ridiculous sign behind you. I just thought that, I thought I'd bring that it's up. It's okay. 117 to 74. Just remember the score. Have it burned in your head for next November when we actually do it again. Now, like you All said, right. if you have to tell players not to gamble on their sport, not to gamble on themselves, you don't have a sport. Like, it's not something where the Players yeah. Association should be coming in and telling guys stuff that they... Like, that's the lowest of the low expectations. You know... Yeah. Dating back to high school and college, like it's something that's embedded in your brain. You may not even know who Pete Rose is, but you know the story. You know what I mean? Like you, you may not know that George Papadopoulos was out here getting suspended back in the day. You know what I mean? You may not even <laughs> know George Papadopoulos was a football player. But you know that gambling is, no matter how pervasive it is elsewhere, you yeah. know it's not something that you're supposed to do. And if you mm -hmm. have to go and remind your players to that point, if you have to go and check their clauses at every point, then you don't have a sport. And the, that's the, for me, it's funny that you brought up the NFL taking over Christmas and the NBA leaning into gambling. I view those things as more or less parallel because the NBA is trying to catch up. The NBA is trying to lean into all these different revenue streams because they just don't have the natural reach, the natural feel that the NFL has. So what that means is sometimes you get in bed, sometimes you get in bed with some Lady Eloises. Sometimes you get in bed with some Jacquelines, you know what I mean? And you know exactly what's going to happen. You're just praying that it doesn't. And because, you know, think about it. Think about the last five years, y'all, playing tournament, in-season tournament gambling on the apps mm -hmm. like it has changed so fast for the NBA you don't have time to actually do cautious checks and balances and that's the thing that's scary here can you make it darker hey <laughs> just a little bit darker hey thank you for watching brother from another if you haven't hit that subscribe button go ahead and do that now don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on peacocktv.com and on Sirius XM channel 85.